listen, get on your feet. It's time to worship an amazing God. It's time to raise your hallelujah.
heart. I'm going to invite those who are not living in the same house. You do not sit close together as we want to continue to be favorable with the protocols. So the physical distance, we want to carefully observe. May I invite the congregation to stand, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I shall not fail you or forsake you, says the Lord. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the end of time. Blessed are the sorrowful, they shall find consolation. The eternal God is our refuge, and on the need are the everlasting arms. One thing I ask of the Lord, it is that one thing that I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Things beyond the seen, things beyond or hearing, things beyond or imagining have all been prepared by God for those who love him. In his favor, there is life. Tears may linger at nightfall, but rejoicing comes in the morning. For our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. For the soul of the righteous are in God's hands. No torment will touch them. They are at peace. Let us worship God together as we share in the opening hymn. Great is thy faithfulness.
Receive, mighty God, the comfort and the peace that only you can give. For we commend this worship experience into your hands. And we ask you, mighty God, to tabernacle with us in your own special way. Thank you, God, for the precious gift of life. Thank you, God that you are with us. You are the Lord of hosts. You are our refuge and strength and a very present and continuous help in trouble. For we offer to you praise. We offer to you thanks. And we pray all this through no other name but the mighty, precious, powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Family and friends, though the sun shines brilliantly on the outside, there is a strong sense of grief in this place. And I hear somebody saying, but the pastor didn't say good morning. For sisters and brothers 
for a number of persons, it is not necessarily a good morning. But I dare say it is God's morning. And I greet you in the name of our God, who is Christ and King. But he's also our comforter. As we gather in this space this morning, we gather to give thanks for the gift of life. And so, I welcome you to this space. I welcome those who are viewing online, and I welcome those who are in the sanctuary. To this, the Browns Hall United Church, affectionately called Bethel, we come to give thanks for the life of George Samuel Burke, sharing also in this Thanksgiving service is Reverend Dwight Fraser, the pastor of the spouse of the deceased. And so we gather in this space under difficult circumstances. We gather knowing fully well that our God understands how each of you feel and knows your pain. We gather because life is precious and we celebrate the gift of life and thank God for the one who has shared this earthly life with us. George Samuel Burke. And so, as we gather in this space today, it is the age of technology, and I hear it ringing already. But if you have your cell phones, and I'm sure, if not all of you, would, if you have not yet done so, I would ask you to ensure that your cell phones are in the silent mode so that we will not be disturbed as we continue in this Thanksgiving service. For those of you who are coming here to this place for the first time and would be in need of our bathroom facilities, they are to be found to the rear of the building, male and female. Let us continue to attend to the order of service and for most part, the service will flow unannounced, but I'll just say to you that for tribute, we will make changes and only George will give a tribute. And as I move along in relation to the first and second lessons, Errol and Leroy will read those respectively in the absence of those who were down to read. And so, welcome. It is my hope that a word, a song, will touch your heart and you will experience the comfort that only God in Jesus Christ can give. Let us continue to worship God as we hear the morning psalm Psalm 23, to be read by Michelle Thompson. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right, George. George is not able to. Let us once again stand as we share in the hymn How Great Thou Art.
Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Um, yeah. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up which is, which is planted, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. And a time to love, and a time to aid. A time to war, and a time to peace of peace, what profit art ye that worketh in that wherein the laboureth? I have seen the trivial which God hath given to the Son of Men to exercise in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no God, no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy good of all his labor, it is the gift of God. I know that whosoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to the north, and things taketh from any God doeth, that men should fear from him. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which is that which is past. Hello everybody, the second lesson will be taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 through to 58. Now this I say brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Christ Jesus Christ, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. The word of the Lord. quite fitting this morning that there's a message in the eulogy as you would have heard parts of it already. Thank you all for coming to honor and celebrate the life of our dearly beloved George Samuel Burke. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to die. A time to cast away. George Samuel Burke was born on the 8th of April, 1936, to parents Robert Burke and Minetta Brown in the district of Brownsall, St. Catherine. He was the youngest of 10 children, three brothers, Herman, Elijah, and Hosea, six sisters, Virginia, Clarissa, otherwise known as Betsy, Lucilda, Lucille, Jane, Anita, and Alice, Aunt Birdie, the only surviving sibling, and she's there. Uncle George attended the Brownsall All Age School, now Brownsall Primary. After he apprenticed to his brother and pursued a trade in masonry, in 1959, he married the love of his life, Lydia Allwood, and with her started to make a family. George understood clearly the responsibilities that came with taking a wife and starting a family. And so in 1960, he decided to take the six week long trip to England in search for a better life. He ended up in Birmingham, where he met his father-in-law, Frank Allwood and Felix Allwood, his brother-in-law, who had both arrived in England in the, er, in the late 1950s. It would seem that George believed in the saying that a man without a wife is like a kitchen without a knife. And so in 1961, he arranged for his wife to join him in England. There they continued adding to their family, as well as brought those children left in Jamaica to join them. While in England, they resided at several locations, Erdington, Aston, Neshals, and finally, Bordisley Green, before returning in the year 2000 to retire in their homeland, Jamaica. George was hardworking and did very well in providing for his family. He worked at numerous jobs while in England. At first, his in-laws, Frank and Felix, both got him a job at their workplace at the GEC as a steel worker. He later worked as a construction worker on the building of the Chelmsley Wood Estate between 1965 and 1970, and for Wilkinson, again as a steel worker. His last job was at Halliday's, as a drop forger until a serious accident forced him to take early redundancy. Uncle George was a very loving, friendly, kind, honest, caring, easygoing, and jovial person. These attributes did not prevent him from being a disciplinarian and made sure that his children were well brought up. I can attest to his kindness, which knew no bounds as such as well as, this, as such was displayed when I lost my stepdad and my mother. He was mild-mannered, soft-spoken, and displayed a warm and endearing personality, one which attracted many to him. This personality allowed him to make lots of friends 
and reunited with those that came over from Jamaica, George loved to have a drink and did so with his friends during his pastime. He also loved his music. His favorite sports were horse racing, playing dominoes with family and friends, an avid cricket fan, and more so of the West Indies team. I believe that he would be very hurt to hear an enthusiastic West Indies fan like himself after becoming overwhelmed by the West Indies team many defeats, suggesting that all cricket pitch in the Caribbean should be dug up to plant ganja and cassava. He would definitely not agree with this suggestion, as win, lose, or draw, his West Indies team would always have his support. George saw family as being dear to him, and back in the days, always loved and looked forward to visiting his three sisters, Birdie, Betsy, and Lucille in Bristol. His wife, children, and family remarked that they were always touched by his presence in, our, in their lives and that he will be missed dearly. After some bouts of illness and many trips to the doctor and hospital, George died at home with his wife, daughter, and grandniece at his bedside on the 13th of December, 2021. He survived by wife Lydia, Aunt Gurley, five of six sons, Irving, Errol, George, Leroy, and Mark, as a sixth son, Paul, predeceased him. Three, three daughters, Grassy, Jean, and Yasmin, sister Alice, Aunt Birdie, nieces, nephews, a host of grand and great grandchildren, other relatives, and friends. To the many families he has left behind, I say, may his tender memories soften your grief. May fond recollection bring you relief, and you may find comfort and peace in the thought of the joy that knowing George brought. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine on him. So I'm going to invite at this time a nephew of George to come, Lawrence, to come and to share a brief tribute to his uncle. Good day to each and every one of you. We thank the Lord for who are here come to pay the Lord respect of my dear Uncle George. Brothers and sisters, Uncle George, he had six sons, three daughters. And I am telling you that all of them, they live like being in the past. So, brothers and sisters, it is so for us to live as all the Lord wants us to live. Because we know that the Lord gives, and he takes. Blessed is the name of the Lord. I and George, we live together, but we are not living anymore. And he's so loving, he's so kind, and also, his wife in the same boat, and, and son and daughter in the same boat. Just as how the Lord wants us to live. So, brothers and sisters, when we talk about somebody 
who are good and kind. The gods to us, God's God. And his children. Just as how he lived, that's the way his children then live. And this is the way all of us should be adopted according to the word of God. So, I missed him and I love him. But as I say, the Lord did and he takes. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And brother and sister, I'm just going to have just two verses of a little song for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray the Lord, man. Oh, the church are cool. Let's pray the Lord, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. I want to go home to heaven, but I don't know how soon that will be. The Lord had made me a promise to send down bright angels for me. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know that the Lord cleanses at me. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know that the Lord cleanses at me. I want to go home to heaven. But I don't know how soon that will be. The Lord made me a promise to send down bright angels for me. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know that the Lord cleanses at me. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Yes, I know that the Lord cleanses at me. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Continue to worship God in our giving. Today we give an offering that is collected in aid of the Browns Hall United Church's Reno renovation fund. And as how kind hearted and a giving person that George was. I would invite us to give generously in his memory. We remain seated for all but the last stanza of the offertory hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, sung to the tune of the happy wanderer. The Lord's my shepherd, I not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green, he laid a the ground.
and always given your best gift. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who you gave to us. And we thank you even now, Lord God, for George. We thank you, Father, for all the lives that he would have touched. But more so, God, we thank you even now for this opportunity to give back in his memory. We pray, gracious God, that you will use this offering, mighty God, for its intended purpose. And you will return, gracious God, to those who have given a hundredfold. Bless this time of giving. For we give you thanks and we pray through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen and amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God our Father, we bow humbly in your presence, seeking even now in this moment to hear a word from you. We ask you, mighty God, that you will speak to our hearts individually. That God, through the convicting work of your Holy Spirit, you will convict hearts, especially those who are not saved. But, O oh God, we also pray that you will comfort grieving hearts. We ask you, gracious God, even now, that you will guard your word with flaming swords of fire, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O God. For you are my strength and all redeemer. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Let me publicly at this time express condolences to the grieving family members. And I thank God for the opportunity to be able to share in the life and times of our dearly beloved George Samuel Burke. For today, I echo the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Family and friends, we are in unprecedented times. For almost two years, this nation has been rocked by this pandemic, COVID-19. But there's also another pandemic called crime that is affecting our nation and all of them have resulted in death 
unprecedented time. The number of persons that have died since the start of the year violently has exceeded four a day. And it is counting. It is cause for alarm. And we are also confronted with the variants. Another variant. But friends, these are unprecedented times. And to live in these times is challenging. For to live 85 years, 8 months, 5 days. George Samuel Burke. He lived a total of 31,295 days. It begs the question, sisters and brothers, for me to ask you as we are living in this time, what are you doing with your time here on this earth? For we are all a candidate for a moment such as this. Whether it is violently or peacefully or through disease or sickness. And so death is a very difficult pill to swallow. Especially as we face the reality of death. So what are you doing with your time? For you see, friends, rich or poor, old or young, male or female, we all have the same amount of one thing. Time. How we use it will largely determine how far we'll go into in life and in our relationship with our creator. Now imagine with me for a moment. There's a bank that deposits $86,400 in your account. And I see some people smiling. Each morning that is deposited in your account. But there's a catch. It carries over no balance from the day, the previous day. So you lose every dollar you don't spend. What would you do? I'm sure you spend every cent, or in, we'll say it in Jamaican parlance, every red cent. Not true. Of course we would spend every cent. But each of us has just such a bank. Its name is time. Every morning it credits you and me with 86,400 seconds. Every night it writes off as loss. Whatever you have failed to invest to good purpose, it carries over no balance. It allows no overdraft. Each day it opens a new account for you. Each night it burns the remains of the day. If you fail to use the day's deposit, the loss is yours. There's no going back. There's no drawing against tomorrow. You must live in the present on today's deposit. Invest it so that you get from it the utmost in health, in happiness, and success. For the clock is ticking. The clock is running. Are you making the most of the time you have been given here on this earth? Friends, 
our chief shepherd. Well, you heard it read from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Our chief shepherd, the Almighty God, speaks to us through his word. And especially through the words of the teacher, the wise man Solomon, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, telling us that time is of essence. How much time do you have remaining? Well, he says, there's a time for everything. There is a time for everything. There's a time to watch the West Indies become the worst Indies. There's a time to have a drink with your friends. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to pray. There's a time for everything. The writer says there's a time and a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. It's time. It's what our lives are composed of. Yet in this busy modern world, it has become all too easy to let time, the stuff of life, run away from us. Emails, new software, phone, phone calls, social media, multiple television channels, and the likes of many other things that keep up our time. Technology. All of these things have importance. And George would have spent some time, 31,000, over 31,000 days on this earth. He had time. And he used his time. And every one of us will have to give an account of how we use our time. Here on this earth, to the creator. And so, in the first eight verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the preacher observes that in life, there's a time to do everything. A time to do everything. Friends, what time is it in your life? What time is it in your life? I believe, sisters and brothers, it is time to look at your life and to see whether or not you are ready for a moment such as this. Are you ready? For a moment such as this, for the tears come. But friends, when all is said and done, God will ask you, how did you spend your time in relation to me, the creator? Well, we have time, some persons say. So we can do anything we want. Everything. Make ourselves happy. Eat, drink, laugh. Have fun. But what about the fear of the Lord? Friends, time is precious. It's a precious commodity. And so, the wise man Solomon, having reflected on his whole life, he tells, he 
told us that he have experienced so much. He said there's a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. For weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You're at a time of weeping, but guess what? Joy comes in the morning. For you see, God is time, and He gives us time. To interact with him for his purpose, for his glory. And so the writer wants us to understand that time is of essence. None of us knows when our time will expire. For we are counting our birthdays up. And God is counting us down have this much more time to live because he knows and so therefore we should connect time is of essence but I believe sisters and brothers the wise man Solomon wants us to also understand that toil is an ability from verse 9 to 15 knowing this he asks what's the point of human toil And answers that there is no point, and that God has put eternity in men's heart. However, He knows that what God does will endure forever, for God is sovereign. As we say in Jamaican parlance, in Runting, He does. Whatever he wants to do. So toil is an ability that we have. We have time to work. But the, the wise man, as he reflected, sisters and brothers, it's an ability that we have. It's an ability. Time is of essence. Toil is an ability. But as I get ready to close, from verse 11 to 15, with all the time that is of essence and the ability to toil, trusting in God is a treasure. For you can have time and toil and Enjoy life, but if your trust is not in God, when you die, we say, Dog, nyam, your supper. Straight up, as we say in Jamaican parlance. Trusting in God is a treasure. It's not that you know about God, you must have a relationship with God. For we have seen what changes there are in the world and must not expect to find the world more sure to us than it has been to others. Now here Solomon shows the hand of God in all those changes. It is he that has made every creature to be that to us, which is, and therefore we must have our eyes always upon him. We must make the best of that which is and must believe it best for the present and accommodate ourselves to it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11. And therefore, while it's time, our time lasts, we must be reconciled to it. No, we must please ourselves with the beauty of it. But then
and he says, everything is as God has made it. It is really as he appointed it to be, not as it appears to us. That which is to us seems most unpleasant is yet in its proper time. All together becoming. Cold is as becoming in winter as heat in summer. There is a wonderful harmony in the divine providence and all its disposal so that the events of it, when they come to be considered in their relations and tendencies together with the seasons of them will appear. We will have to give an account of our time. So, trusting in God Relying on God, having a relationship with God is the treasure, is a treasure of how we use our time here on this earth. Friends, it makes no sense that we get this 86,400 seconds per day. And then after 31,000 how many hundreds of thousands of days that we live. When we face the creator and he says, why should I let you into my heaven? What will you say to him? You can't bet your chance that time. Because there is no repentance in the grave. Now is the time to trust in the Lord, to believe in him, to receive him as Lord and Savior. Now is the time. If George never did it, he can't do it again. And you can't do it for him. Every one of us has to do it for ourselves. To trust in God is a treasure. We can say, welcome, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of my eternal rest. So time is of essence. We have the ability to toil. And of course, treasure God, trusting in God, is a treasure. Believe in him. For the word of God tells us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believe is a strong word. Trust in him. Rely on him. Cling to him. Hold fast to him. That's what believe means. So when we say we believe, that's what it means. We trust in him. We rely on him. We hold fast to him. For he is the giver of life. And he, we will have to give an account to him. Friends, my time before you is almost up. What time is it in your life? Has the time yet not come for you to give your life to Jesus Christ before it is too late? Too late. Don't find yourself on the wrong end of being delayed, too late, without having trusted in God. Having this treasure in earthen jars of clay for this all surpassing greatness is from God the Father. May you not just look at your watch and see how long I am teaching, but look to God. Listen to Him saying, Come, I need your life. Listen to him say, 
I will lead you along unfamiliar paths. For death is a reality for all of us. I could be the next one. Ready I am when the Lord says come. Are you ready? For death will be defeated. Yes. And we have comfort. Through the eternal arms of our loving God. So you see, friends, this wicked thing called death that leaves us in pain and grief Our God says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. He doesn't, and he will not leave us comforted, but he asks us to make sure we order our lives so that when death comes, we know we have the treasure because we have trusted in God. We can meet with God face to face. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of my eternal rest. Today, use your time with the creator in view. Take the gift of salvation by trusting in, believing in, relying on, clinging to Hold fast to Jesus. For Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose from the dead, and paid the penalty for your sins and for mine. And the only way you can have this treasure is by trusting in the work that Jesus Christ did so that you can receive the gift of salvation. See, if you don't do it, I'll say it already and I'll say it again. Dog, yam. Be comforted in this season that time is of essence. Toil is an ability. Trusting in God is a treasure. May we use our 86,400 seconds with the creator in view. Comfort be to you grieving family member. But conviction to those who have not yet received God as their Lord and Savior. Rest eternal. Grant unto George Samuel Burke. May life perpetually shine. continue to reflect on our time as we have selection heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Shall we bless the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord? We are alive and well. So we have all right to give God praise. Shall we bless the Lord? Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have decided that we will change the song, Heaven Sounded Sweeter, because we don't want to, we, have, we are already grieving. So we're just going to sing something that will strengthen us. Shall we bless the Lord? Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Like a ship sailing out on a trip sweet and long to and far from shore. So far from home, I sail out in search of a reason to go on, and there I found 
who you gave to us so many years ago, who you gave to us in so many meaningful ways through the course of his life. So, Holy God, we thank you for his birth and growth. We thank you for his development in this community. We thank you for his travels, for his work, for his character for how we were able to enjoy time with him in his respective pursuits and joy. We thank you for the full positive scope of his life and contribution, including and especially his relationship with his dear wife and his giving, helping to give to this world the nine children that he fathered. We give you thanks, O oh God, that he was someone who in his manner and conduct raised them in a positive and a proper way and that, that who they are today bears in significant measure the marks of how he raised them. We give you thanks, O oh God, for how you have brought us together to celebrate the life that he lived. And we thank you for the sense of meaning that you have brought into our experience through this time of worship. We thank you, O oh God, that you have reminded us about the time that you have made available to us, that you have reminded us that we are able to utilize this time for good, but also that we are answerable to you for how we use this time. So we thank you for how your son, George, used this time. And we thank you for how you have enabled us to use the time wisely so far. And we thank you that through your inspiration, drawing on this occasion, we can be steered and led to even make better use, or at least continue good use of the time you have given to us. And so, Holy God, we, we come to you with the steering not just of our thanksgiving, but also with the stirring of our mourning. Because he who you gave to us in so many positive ways is no longer. Is gone from this life. And the, there are tears in the eyes of the children. There is pain in the heart of his wife. There is sorrow among the relatives, sister, nephew, everyone, the wider family are overcome by his death. We ask only God that as they are mourning, that you would comfort them. That as they are mourning, you would help them to know that you are close to them. That as they are mourning, they will feel that you undergird and strengthen them that as they are mourning, they will know that you will continue to journey with them and carry them. We know, Lord, moments from this will be gathered at the graveside 
parting with his remains one last time. We ask that especially in those moments which can be so overwhelming, you would help those who mourn to know that you hold them, that you keep them, and that you will carry them forward. That in the hours and days and weeks and months ahead, when they look back with that sense of emptiness, when they feel how much they miss him, that you will give them positive memories, that you will help them to find meaning, that you will make it possible for them to move on in meaningful ways. Oh God, be with especially the family, be with all of us as we come to you with our stirring of mourning. And Lord, we ask that as we come to you, not only with thanksgiving, and not only in mourning, but as, as we also come to you hoping, hoping in your continuing grace that you will strengthen, that you will guide, that you will help, that you will cause that each of us and all of us will go on looking to you, depending on you and drawing on the, the many graces that you give to us. Help us that we will put our hope in your salvation, that we will put our hope in your direction, that we will put our hope in your provision, that we will put our hope most fully in our relation with you in and through your son, Jesus Christ, by the Spirit, that as we live each day, we will live in the best way, that as we live each day, we will value today, we will value our life, and we will value it in such a way that we live it well, so that we will be properly able, we will be properly able to give an answer to you when you ask us to give an account for how we have lived our lives. Once again, we give you thanks for his life, and we entrust ourselves to you as those who mourn, and we hope in you that you will continue to enable us to live in the most meaningful way possible. For we pray through Christ Jesus, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Of our loved one. George Samuel Burke invite you to pay careful attention to these instructions. And so, during the singing of the recessional hymn, I'm going to invite the pall bearers to come at the Second to last stanza. Paul Bearers, take your place and be ready to move as I will move on the last stanza. So Paul Bearers, be in place at the second to last of the, the hymn and I will lead the platform party and the casket through at the when we should have completed this exercise, we will make our way down to Williams Gully, and I will be leading the procession. Members behind. No one should be really leaving just now. I invite you just to stay in your place. pay our last respects. I therefore invite us all to stand as we share together addiction. Go forth from this place remembering that time is of essence. Toil is an ability and trusting in God is a treasure. Go forth from this place and be comforted and 
now to the one who is able to keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory, jubilant and above reproach, to the only God our Savior, be glory and majesty and power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The battle hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the Lord has stored. He had loosed the faith, the lightning of the terrible world of sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. I have seen him in the watch for God. A hundred certain camps they have builded him. An altar in the evening dews and dance. I can read his righteous sentence in the game and day of the day's marching on. And the soul of wrong his slave, our God is marching
Mixers ready? I'm not ready for it yet. Exalt in the hope of the divine glory which is to be ours. Such hope is no fantasy. Through the Holy Spirit, God's love has flooded our hearts. We brought nothing into this world and we can take absolutely nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be brought to life. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and I am the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. For if we died with Christ, we shall live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. 
but there is nothing in death or life in the world as it is or the world as it shall be. Nothing in all creation that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. But Jesus said, for this moment you're sad, but I shall see you again, and then you will be joyful, and no one shall rob you of your joy. But I hear Jesus saying a second time, because I live, you too shall live. But I hear Jesus emphatically saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever has faith in me shall live even though he dies. And no one who lives and has faith in me shall ever die. We have entrusted our brother George Samuel Burke to God's merciful keeping, we now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died, was buried, and rose again for us, and is alive and reign forever. We pause for a moment. Let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Let us pray. God of grace and peace. In your son Jesus Christ, you have given us new birth into a living hope. Strengthen us now to live in the power of the resurrection and keep us united with our loved ones and with all your people in heaven and on earth from whom in death we are not divided for you live and reign forever and ever amen as we give the attendant time to seal the tomb there are some songs appointed for the graveside that I'm going to invite us to let us share together as we sing. Special tributes, floral tributes. Now it's best to do it now. Anything going down because it's going to cover it. Call.
the inside. Everything out here is going on top. Is that it? Okay. On the outside. Yes. Everything that is to go in is already in. All right. Wonderful. So once that is so, then we we are good. And so the song says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to, to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buff, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and that shed his own blood for it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well it is well with my soul I sing, oh, the bliss of this glorious God. My sin is not in part, but the whole is nailed to his cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, hates the day when my faith shall be sad, the cloud be rolled back. As a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well, it is well.
I know where I am going. I know where I am going. I know where I am going. I know. Yes, I know. I know where I am going. I know. Joy bells are ringing. Happy children are singing. I know where I am going. I know. I know.
sharing with the family and we ask for your continuous prayerful support for them especially in the days to come god bless you all have a blessed rest of the afternoon god bless you.